Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's preview, Sharks versus Bulls. A big game uh, for the Bulls in terms of their URC ambitions. And for the Sharks, a nothing game. It is their last game of the season. They will not be progressing to the playoffs. But for them, job done in terms of salvaging their season, having won the Challenge Cup a week ago in London. Um, they have got themselves Champions Cup rugby for next season. Which means that this is a bit of a... A send-off game for their fans. A, a thank you for trusting them. Probably a bit of a trophy parade afterwards and a celebration. But um, they've gone with a strong team. And you can see they definitely don't want to end on a bad note. And uh, they want to try and contend and try and finish with a bit of momentum. And um, I think the Bulls fans be very frustrated the fact that they've gone so strong. But at the same time, you know, the Bulls, if you want to, you know, get, earn that home semi-final, which is what they're looking for. They're currently placed second. There is a chance for them to finish first if Munster do slip up. Um, but a win for them will secure that second spot and uh, a potential home semi-final should they win their quarter, which I think is very important. I think the Bulls at home are a complete different kettle of fish to the Bulls anywhere else. You know, Loftus at altitude, for example, um, they, uh, it is getting a lot cooler. So, for example, the heat not as big of a factor. Um, it's still pretty warm down here uh, during the day. But that's that altitude, isn't it, that makes a big difference. And the home support, Fortress Loftus, if you will. So uh, they'll be desperate to get that victory, will the Bulls. Now, before we look at the two teams, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. We'll start with the Sharks, who are the home side tomorrow. And uh, they have retained their Springbok front row of Red Sekhova, Chair, Bongi Manambi, and Vincent Koch, who absolutely decimated Gloucester last weekend. Vincent Koch got a man of the match for an all-round. I mean, he scrummed well, carried well. 50-22s coming out from him. He had an all-around phenomenal game. And just that front row, I genuinely think, probably won in the game. Every single time was it was a scrum, there was a penalty. It was that that straightforward. Uh, Corner Roll comes in to replace Ibn Etzebeth, who has the weekend off. And he will partner for Brandt Kropler, who also had a strong game last weekend. As did this entire loose trio. James Fenton, maybe a bit of an unsung hero for the Sharks this season. Not the biggest uh, of, of, of loose forwards, but packs a bit of a punch. Very hard-working player. Uh, Vincent took a couple of big moments last week. And uh, no bigger moment than that of Pepsi Butelezi's try, which uh, I think for me was probably sort of the, the try that really put the Sharks in the front foot and uh, maybe even broke the back of, of Gloucester. So it was a really important try. And I thought as a pack last week, the Sharks looked stronger than I've ever seen them. Uh, no Grant Williams this weekend and no good Michael on the Pippi. So a couple of spring marks have been given a bit of a break. Um, as a result, Cameron Wright will start at number nine. Still the injury to Jaden Hendricks. Uh, he will partner Siamasuku. will continue to try and... Uh, Give Rusty something to think about uh, in terms of a potential buck call-up for maybe even that Wales test, which is less than a month's time. Uh, Edwin Cater comes in with Michael Pimpy. will partner with Bernard Cock up in the fast. In that back three, your midfield for the Sharks will be Captain Francois Fonfe Francois Fonfenta. Francois Fonfenta. Um, and outside him, it will be Ethan Hooker. Off the bench, it will be Fez and Barter. In Tuka, Bruno, uh, Kwesi Mono gets a rare opportunity. Lapis Lapis Kakni, Dylan Richardson backing up the rest of the pack. Then the young Bradley Davids gets a chance, as does Buddha Chamberlain in his farewell game, playing against the side he assigned for. He will be playing at the Bulls next season. Diego Polis uh, gets an opportunity as well. If you look at the Bulls side, very strong as well. In the front row, Kjostina Kamp, uh, Jan Kropala, and Volko Lowe. Big opportunity for them going up against Springbok props to try and put themselves in sort of the Springbok equation, except, ex ex except, except um, especially... Uh, Volko Lowe, who I think for me is very much on the radar and will have an opportunity to go against Oxen Chair, who's one of the best commentators in world rugby uh, at the moment. The back row, will, or second row rather, will be Ruan for Mark and Ruan Nokia, who captain the side. The back row will be Marco Bastard, Alric Lowe, and Cameron Honeycomb. So Springbok cap players listed in amongst that pack, as well as future Springboks in the form of, for me, a Cameron Honeycomb. Um, and um, I tell you what, we went from Ox playing uh, nicely. We wouldn't, he wouldn't look amiss. I don't think uh, the, his sort of trajectory, although he is a bit older. Uh, if you look at the halfback pairing, Ambrose Appear, who signed a new contract yesterday, keeping him at Loftus for a further three season, will partner Jan Kulsen. Uh, it's the all three mock back three of Kurt Lawrence, so Kenny Moody, and Billy LaRue. Howard Forster will partner the young and informed David Creel in the midfield. Off the bench, it will be Akka van der Merwe, Sapir Matanzema, Francois Klopper, Renard Ludwig, Nizam Carr, Keegan Johannes Christmas, and Sebastian de Klerk in a very orthodox 5 3 split. Uh, in terms of where this game is going to be won and lost, the pack, isn't it? It's going to be that forward battle, the scrum battle, the lineups, for example. I think that's going to be the main area in which these two teams will, will be desperate to try and count on tops. So I, I do get the feeling that whoever dominates that area, if there is a dominant team, will probably be the one that wins the match. I think that there's so much attacking talent in that uh, Bulls back line, in the likes of Kurt Lawrence, and Kenny Moody, Billy LaRue, uh, with a playmaker like Jan Kursen that can cause a lot of damage. 
But similarly, I think that Sharks pack last week showed them that they're not uh, a team to be taken lightly. So let me know what your score predictions are down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you soon.